Hey guys, and welcome back to a Trek Yards Breaking News. Uh, today's an exciting day. Anyway, I'm Captain Foley. I got a hands. And like I just said, today's an exciting day. Mm. Got some new sneak peeks at Discovery. And to be perfectly honest, I'm super excited and jazzed up now. Re-energized, as it were, the <laughs> franchise. Energized. You can't re-energize Dilithium or recrystallize it, but you can re-energize Captain Foley. And Commander Hawkins, I think. We, he's excited too. We, we're just tracked out here. Yeah. I mean, what are, you know, people have been saying, oh, you're not hearing anything. And people say, oh, it's going to be cancelled. But we knew they started filming. And they've already, now they've got something to show. Boy, have they showed a lot. More than I think people see in first first look. And we want to take a look at a whole lot of these different things. But today we're going to focus on the Trek Yards topic. The new ship reveal. Or at least sort of ship reveal. At least ship design reveal. Stuart, we got a new ship. We got a new ship. Yes. <laughs> okay, so it comes in sort of in the middle of the thing on a monitor and I've, I've created this Photoshop image of both views because it's a little rotating shot. For some reason it's in a camera view which is not right because th that's not how cameras work but they've did it on purpose to show us, very, very on purpose. So when I first saw this I was actually out and about and <laughs> I was just stopped at a gas station, thought I'd open up Facebook and saw it, started watching it because um, I was out doing other stuff, like I said, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden um, Samuel was messaging me saying, new Discovery thing, and I'm like, I know I'm watching it right now. <laughs> so I finished watching it, <laughs> messaged him back, and just got home, so we're, we're announcing this. But when I first saw this ship, I was excited and kind of concerned. <laughs> wow, okay, starting, uh, starting with the big words, well, okay. I, I knew for a fact that now everybody's going to compare this to the Ares, because it does look very similar. But, honestly, guys... It looks like the Reliant, the Miranda class. It looks like the Centaur. It looks like any underslung this. It looks like the Titan, which was designed by Sean Turingeau. I mean, guys. <laughs> but that's not all it looks like. Samuel has been making uh, conversations online today about comparing it to something else. So, Samuel? Yeah, I mean, it, the first, first thing to say is that there's only certain numbers of ways you can arrange a saucer and the cells. I'm just, I think we should all just be encouraged. This is a very Star Trek federation looking ship slightly closer to what we know than the the the, the uh, discovery that's just because the discovery is a specialist craft of some sort which we've been saying since the beginning but there's actually a ship that i knew this looked like straight away and it's a uss mawson uh, designed by john eves years and years ago for an australian fan group and this was something he puts on his he put on his eavesdropping uh website it's a concept i've seen for years but very clearly an akira style ship because of the roll bar um, but more advanced, and if you look at the shapes, as you can see, shapes side by side, I mean, these ships, in my opinion, you know, the Ares and that, similar. It's like 90% the same ship, in my opinion, design-wise. Yes. So yeah. clearly, they not only inspired, but they, they looked at John's archive and said, ah, that will work. Yeah, and it is worth pointing out that John Eves is a designer uh, working for, with Discovery, um, and we've kind of known that for a while, but haven't been able to say much. So, I mean, it's an interesting little... Yeah, John has John has posted things publicly, but he hasn't yes. actively promoted it. It is on his uh, CV, on his website. So if you've looked, yes. you can find. But it wasn't our place it's to announce it. also on IMDb, from. you said? Yes, I think so. I think so. Um, so, yeah, clearly, clearly inspired. And I, I, The reason I think this is very much this ship and not, say, an Ares or a Centaur is because of how pointed those nacelles aren't even the way that the um, pylons are I mean those details I mean, well I guess you've even got the two you know uh, an X01 style lines on the top I mean this is so similar that which I love because I've always loved this design it's always been a awesome post TNG ship I'll stop there for a second and let you catch up there Stuart but now they're moving it into the pre TOS era and looking at this wireframe model that I see, it's looking a little too advanced for the time period, if I do say so myself. Now you put a TOS skin on that, oh. or more, more closely, looking by the, at the front of it, more closely like an NX styled skin, and it looks like you desperately want to say something. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm re just reacting to what you're saying. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Um, you put an NX style skin on it, it'll look very much like the next kind of NX01 variant or adaptation if you, if you will uh so i i need to see it skinned yes uh the wireframe is fantastic it's great but it looks very post voyager almost with the skin with that wireframe without the skin 
See, uh, we say this all the time on the show, but Star Trek is important because it does have this flowing continuity, especially since they've gone to the future, the future of the future, the future of the future of the future, and even the past of the future. So we know the evolutionary steps, and my mum actually said, oh, it's fine, whatever. But, you know, if you're going to throw in these pointy nacelles in a point when they should have cylindrical nacelles, then for fans like us, we have to say, okay, so they've gone from... Why has technology advanced from cylinders in NX01 to points, back to the cylinders, then to rectangles, then to ovals, then to cylinders, then to points? And it's like saying, but don't don't give us this step that doesn't fit. That said, this design itself, the only thing that speaks advanced is the nacelles. Everything else is generic, Star Trek-y, sorcery-ness. Yeah, it's clearly a touchstone to the NX01, which I love, because there are the pontoons, there is the... the, the difference in hull style it's not the smooth flatness and that i, I love mm-hmm. because if they're only going to link a few things in you don't need to do that many because technology does radically change some designs that we do change in you know the but, 80, 90 but, years. but samuel samuel it's just a tv show get a life don't overthink this but wait a minute we're trek yards i'm sorry i know people are going to say that in the comments i know that because they say it mm-hmm. for other videos we do see but, yes <laughs> obviously but at the same time it's fun and we try and approach it in a very like we don't say one plus one equals three we we look at the one plus one and try and we see the two and we try and work out the, the within the math you know we're not going radicals here so we can see these obvious links and mm. you know my, my question seeing this design is okay well what are what well, okay what are the nacelles but just like you i mimic your, your opinion this design I love the design. It looks great. Mm-hmm. And it could look even better if it if it sports a TOS-ish-esque feel, but the nacelles are maybe armoured. Maybe no, if there's no glowing bits, that'd be even better, because at least you're saying that's an evolutionary step that we are going to get to, because maybe, mm. maybe the TOS aesthetic is the heavy cruiser. Maybe this is the tactical cruiser. They actually do have a, a more sleek-styled nacelle, because you could actually see this evolving into the TMP, um, because they just flatten it out a bit, you know, they just they actually bulk it up into the, you know, you've got half rectangle there, depending on how it looks in sort of the front profile. You know, mm. what if it's the tactical nacelle? You know, what if it's a warship? Well, I'm putting my mission briefing cap on for yeah. a minute, looking at this picture. On the stretch, you got the longer parts that stick out. Now, mm. those could be mm. weapons of some sort, but are they maybe an articulation point? Maybe when it's at rest, they're like this, and then they articulate straight down like a Miranda class, to go to war. Now that's interesting. Hmm. That's one of the first things I kind of noticed on the design were those, they're very prominent. So, I mean, Mm. I'm I'm thinking either weapons or sensor pods or some kind of articulation point. So that's wonderful because if that's true, then it has, then it is a Miranda class. It's an NX Miranda class, NX saucer, Miranda nacelles, but I guess more Klingon battlecruiser renegade nacelles, but that's a, yeah, it steps away from the Centaur and the Ares class comparisons because, oh, yeah. I mean, if they do go down, I mean, that's definitely Miranda look. Huh. As it looks right there, it looks like they probably go straight out, kind of much like the Ares and stuff, but yeah. who knows? Who, who's to say, really? Um, well, the thing about evolution is that they obviously, that, that if you're designing for a new show and a new era, you're going to be looking at the past, you know, styles, which as we know from previous episodes, you know, are the warp deltas are the pointy ships and then we've got a first saucer in the nx one you look at later ships uh you've got a skip tos you know you look at uh, tmp you've got miranda you've got the excelsior that's a super new ship and it's just you know connie vaguely shape then you've got things like the centaur you've got the curry you've got some weird things so there's not very many iterative shapes but those shapes should be consistent throughout the timelines mm-hmm. just with different versions so i i, I love seeing you know the, the tos uh, center, which is obviously this is where I guess we should probably talk about the the, the Aries. It looks like the Aries now. Again, mm-hmm. the the Aries is a TOS Centaur. That was its design yeah. lineage. Yeah, it it was designed after the Centaur like look. So yeah, and this is a pre TOS Centaur, but clearly based off John's original design, which came yes. before the Aries. But again, it's just a lower slung nacelle. So it's like, I mean, everything's from everything. You know, I mean, Discovery looks like Ralph McCroy, but also looks like a, a Klingon D7 plus a Connie plus, or a Warp Delta and an X or a Saucer. I mean, the, everything mm-hmm. you can look to anything. And it is our jobs to say that. But honestly, mm-hmm. I'm more interested in the fine details because the shape's obvious. You can see the parallels. It's the small things that are really interesting. 
Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I, I like the uh, comparison you made there to the to the NX01 saucer with the two pontoons in the middle. Yeah. Um, very, you get that feel very much off this. And the more you look at the wireframe as a still image, uh -huh. you can actually see there's some kind of deflector in the front of the ship, yep. much like the NX01, with like dual little antenna. Yes, I had noticed that. Oh, um, mm, now, again, that could be a weapon. They could have changed it by well, the Sierra, the, but I highly the, doubt it. The NX02 has two antennas, so that's a that, oh, that does is, it? I didn't even know. That's one that. of the, that's one of the few evolutionary steps from the NX01 and NX02. Um, the NX01 refit carries that along, so that would make a lot of sense. Interesting. Ah, interesting. I don't see a visible. I don't see a visible bridge though. But again, it's a wireframe. I mean, I don't. I don't. Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> the model won't even be finished yet. So the bridge. Or like is, you said, it could be a tactical version, and the bridge is. Yeah. protected more uh maybe a deck or two in yeah i mean that's the thing you still want to be creative my my only like okay star trek online is the best example they need new tos ships they're being really really creative and breaking the mold you know four four nacelles three nacelles two nacelles one nacelle they're keeping the look and the feel so being creative is a really good thing and and losing the bridge on the top if the ship is a specific if the ship is there for a reason with a set design purpose, which then ignores the need for it to be on the top for the, for the base rules that we you know say in Star Trek. That's good. That's great. That's fine. As long as you can explain it. As long as they don't just say, lop off the sort, lop off the bridge because it looks bad. Then we've got a much harder job trying to explain a lack of thought, which was part of, a lot of why the J.J. Abrams films don't work as well because there's a there's a lack of thought which we have to put thought into, mm -hmm. which yeah. in itself we're lucky if it pulls together. That's why the but it is and, fun. It is fun to speculate and, and come oh, up with in world reasons for it, non thought, like you said. It's very very fun. Things like the Franklin are a great yeah. accident, you know, happy accident where actually a lot of things do actually work. And if you watch our episode um, on the Franklin, you can see it's got huge parallels. You know, you know what I just realized? Maybe yeah. the ship. Isn't that maybe it's not the top, maybe it's the bottom. Maybe this is like a ripoff of the Franklin. <sighs> hey, the Franklin was meant to be the other way around, so maybe this they is just true. It was, it, it was originally designed the uh, vertical by Sean Hargraves. Franklin variant. <laughs> There's not so, many variations of ship design, guys. It's not many. It looks like what it looks like. Um, well, let's see if we can break down any other little details. So you've got the nacelles, you've got the saucer, you've got the deflector, you have not got a secondary hull because I think you'd be able to see through the the. Uh, it might be a it might be an Akira style secondary hull, you know, just a small. Mm -hmm. But there's no visible secondary piece. You'd see it through the wireframe, but there are what, if you look at the way the pontoons are, they're thinner at the front, and then they get much thicker at the back, which seems to combine into a into a sort of secondary structure which is i think a shuttle bay but it feels very armored what do you think about the back part and, and maybe even scale or i don't know well yeah the first thing i thought was shuttle bay i mean when you zoom in on it you kind of got like a looks like a hangar door and then like a landing pat platform yeah. at the back which is cool uh, visually you can which would, with that yeah it would make perfect sense for the next evolution of shuttle pod design instead of launching like they do out of the nx01 from the bottom you're going to have a shuttle bay and yeah. uh yeah yeah. So yeah, I, I totally I totally buy that for the back end, and, and again, it goes back to Johnny's that other design, um, and because that's it's it's not quite the same at the at the back there, but uh, it's close enough that you can it, see the yeah it pulls away the Akira elements, which yeah. are the which are very you know there is no pre Akira. One great thing I like about the fact that what, what they did the Discovery team you know, they gave us so many so many tidbits so many tidbits and Easter egg glimpses in this show we'll we'll talk about. But they gave us a rotation shot. If it was just the top view, you wouldn't get a sense. But because we've got the side view, we know, you know we can see the dimensionality. We can see how thick things are. That was really, really good of them. Because it gives you a different feel. I don't, know, I, do, I don't think it's a big ship. But I think it's a very neat ship. Very, oh, very absolutely. combined. Very, I think that source will be one deck big. Maybe a small ship. Um... Maybe even a maybe even a through maybe even a through deck shuttle bay. Maybe it might be a shuttle shuttle launch bay. Because what if what if as a new as ah there we go. What about as a brand new reinvention of the first draft Trek formula? The because you, you can sort of see space between the pontoons. What if the pontoons raise, but then you got a flat canal and then the back bit because it's sort of a taper. What if it's actually the back launch pad or a front launch through? So actually shuttles can launch through the entire middle of the ship. Go into the aft shuttle bay or launch out, kind of like the Titan, at least invisible. But then you've only got those two sides of the saucer, and then the bit 
obviously the, the lower deck of the saucer, which would be a very interesting visual statement and, and certainly further away from the norm. But again, functionally, you can justify it. And then you've got like a fighter carry. Maybe the, maybe the pontoons actually have doors that close and they go, you've got a mass launcher, very simple launcher, therefore not showing advanced technology you know, later on, but a very simple <clears throat> design-wise. Probably push it a little bit, but what do you think about that? I love it. Uh, one thing <laughs> I was thinking, though, is that instead of being on the top, like you said, why not have it on the bottom? Because we don't know what the bottom looks like. Yeah. There could be a more pronounced lower launch or landing bay, um, and then mm. they could take elevators up to the other deck mm. or something mm. to launch again. Or I don't know. I mean, there's so many possibilities, and so stuff we just think of on the fly like yep. that i think that's a fantastic thing um so yeah uh, there's a lot of possibilities here and i'm like you said i'm glad they gave us the rotational thing i would have liked to see more like a little bit of the bottom <laughs> uh just so okay. we can get a feel for they should yeah. have done a full trackers data file on it see all the views <laughs> well uh, one for... day i'm sure this ship will be on data files so i'm sure either barry or one of other amazing three models will make a, a version for us so I'll, i want to address the last elephant in the room though we did mention it roughly at the start does it feel more advanced than the tos aesthetic or than the nx01 aesthetic i mean how does it feel timeline wise because johnny's concept is a post post TNG, well, I... and it feels beautifully post tng I think I've already addressed that when I said I think it, I personally I think it feels very post Voyager. It feels like a new it feels like a ship you'd seen in Star Trek online. Yeah. It really does to me. That design really speaks to that, especially the shape of those nacelles. I can't get by that. If the nacelles were more of a cylinder, then a little bit of with a little bit of something release. going on. With uh, not really though. Not really though. I mean, with the with the way the struts are, they're more integrated into the. Look like they even attach the saucer and stuff. It's more. Yeah, we need to see the angle. The angle is more is more yeah. gentle. It's more wi it's more wing like than 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 struts. Yes. Which is very nice. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it, I think it speaks to a more advanced technology, which is fine i guess but i mean they, they have to they have to make it different they have to make it new they have to make it appealing uh for the 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 age that it's made in and that's one thing you got to understand about star trek right because so. that is that is a wonderful design for an cell yes absolutely it's a one i mean that is the renegade Klingon battle cruiser engine i mean it is it's, it's almost identical <laughs> yeah. you know um but again it's designed by johnny's too <laughs> so i don't know if this, this ship was designed by johnny's but i get the sneaking suspicion it might have been it, it, it might just at least at least the initial thought process at least yeah. maybe he just checked it off and said i like it i don't know yeah. he did something on it well that's familiar least. hey thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the reference other designers yeah but I, mean, I still like the fact that you know if those nacelles were a little bit chunkier and they still could be we don't know the three dimensionals those are very much refit here in the cells because the refit here in the cells are also just about that shape mm. you know which is an interesting mm -hmm. like just on their side which you've never seen before like that kind of like the um d7 style nacelle hmm it is so difficult because I just really wish either they explain the differences they don't just leave it out there either it's a parallel timeline parallel prime or they explain it as Tactical. I don't want experimental. That's that's too that's too easily used. But you know, separate design contract. There's an Andorian line or something. You know, a real reason for differences because there is going to be. Look at the car industry today. A Danish car, an American car, a Japanese car, a sports car. You could put ten cars together in a line, all built in the last two years, that could look completely different. Obviously, still four wheels. Or three wheels. If you look at you know only, only fools and horses, they could all be radically different, and all could be explained, as long as that same thought, even if it's retconned in, after they've shot the episode, either by us or by someone else saying, ah, because of this, I'll be happy, because it's so close to being a great ship, you know, and do they just have to explain it? Go on one level of background, and great job. Now, Samuel, I know what everyone out there is thinking. They saw the wall of Discovery shots, <laughs> and they, they 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 paused on it just like I did, and they looked at it, and they realized that's the exact same damn ship we've already seen in the teaser. That is why I ignored that part of the teaser, because we know they've iterated, and we, we, we've got a very active Trek Starship forum, as you guys know, and everyone's saying, oh, no, they kept the same design, or, oh, no, I love the differences. I'm thinking... Huh. Everyone sees what they want to see. Whereas we yes. know it's been altered quite a lot. And 
you know, yeah. this trailer, this teaser shows production. It shows the fact that they're doing things. You know, a wall of concept art is all you need to show. They're just showing the old concept art because if they revealed the new ship in that, you know, that is an entire new trailer. Why would they show it in this? Where it's a much safer bet just to show the wall of old concepts from, you know, three months ago. So it's the old ship, guys. Don't worry. But but they're making it look like this is the final version. Look at all the pictures of it we yeah. have. And it's like that, that way, as we kind of discussed prior to this filming this, the actual reveal of the ship will be like shocking. It'll be amazing, right? Uh, so <laughs> I don't know we just ruined their little their promotional thing. They were hoping that everybody would think, oh, they didn't change it and they'll hate it. And then all of a sudden it'll be a surprise. But surprise, it's, it probably doesn't look like that. Um, it, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm like 99.87% sure. You heard it here first, folks. But I just want to give a huge shout out to Discovery. This is a, one, this mm. a wonderful video. Um, you know, this is the one I, we've been waiting for. This is the one you mentioned you wish you could have seen last time. Yes. Instead of hearing more casting news, you wanted to see. Well, this. yeah, this, this was more than we could hope for. And, it and you know, it could have just been that first bit about, you know, legacy and stuff. But it won't actually show us real stuff. And you'll see more videos on this channel probably today and tomorrow and all these sorts of things. But this is a great sign that they know that press online is the most important thing right now. Good press, <laughs> seeing things. Now they are ready to show things they can now show things, which is the way it should be, you know, because especially since the feedback they got for the trailer was uh, or because they showed it super early, they rushed it out guess they waited, and now you've got a really nicely made little teaser and I think now that shows their marketing is going to release little tidbit videos, just like you know The Hobbit did um, and that will really get this excitement up, like you said right at the start, you're so excited now this will be so amazing, if they keep this up show a little bit each time, well done guys and thank you and for to, the ship. <laughs> and to all the naysayers that have been commenting on our videos and others, this will never be made. CBS is never going to release I mean, this. What a silly what? Ugh. Yeah, it's Star Trek. It's 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 got a legacy. They're going to do their best to respect that legacy. And <sighs> that's all I can really say. But, yes, but because we have to film the next video, Stuart, about the next amazing yes. tease. So I was just going to say, there's more to this trailer. <laughs> Than mm -hmm. just ships, uh, but since we're the ship guys, we thought we'd do that first to yes. get that out of the way. But there's costumes, there's sets, there's blueprints, so we're going to discuss those in future videos. So until then, guys, like the video, share this around to everybody that might be interested in Discovery, which should be a lot of people. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Cogans. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs>